Okay, Lee, so we were talking about just the importance of how much this shot right here and doing it the right way can really help people. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's my bread and butter drill. Okay. Primarily for people coming in. So what is the difference then, like, if, if I'm going from hitting it about, like, when I do this drill, I hit it about that far, like 60 yards or something, and then if I want to hit it, like, a, my full swing shot? Basically, I, what you're going to do is when you just did that 60-yard shot, you're not energizing what your pivot's doing as you're making your motion. Oh, okay. So as you go back farther, when you come down, you're putting more pressure, you're going to maybe push off your left foot a little bit more as you go through, which gives you more ground reaction force to hit the ball a little bit farther. But when you're going, hitting 40, 60 yards like you would with your short game, you're, you're making the same motion around, but you're not energizing the ground because you don't need the speed. Okay, gotcha. And you don't want that speed. You want to hit it a certain distance that way. So we'll do a short one, which feels... Like yeah, that. and see that's basically you're once you get the club over here, you're just letting your body turn to bring the club to the other, to the heel line. Okay. Now, if you want to hit it farther, mm -hmm. now go back. You're gonna now you energize your feet a little bit. You're gonna be a little bit more pressure in the ground with your feet, and you feel and you feel more acceleration with your body as you're swinging, which moves out to the club whenever you're making your swing. Right. When you're hitting these shots, the two keys to really remember, I think, Lee, see if you agree, uh, the three things is it needs to be from your toes to then get it on your heel line. Yes, number one. Number two is when you do that, then learn how to hit the ball still from the inside, even though you're going from here to there, you gotta hit it from the inside. And what that all comes down to is really starting to learn how not to drag it that way but to this is your lowest spot right here and yeah. your most out spot with the hands and your club head's going down and out and your handle's coming in yep. and then the third part with that which kind of goes with it use your body well so when you do this 50 40 50 yard shot you shouldn't feel like you're getting speed from here. Okay. You go back and come down, you're there. Now let this create the motion. Okay. It's almost like you're you're sinking up the club with your body. I think that's how a lot of the pros mm -hmm. hit, hit their shots 40, 50, 60 yards, is they've got the arm swing is matching up with the body swing. And that's why they tell you the smash factor has got to be one. Okay. Rather than being 1.5 like with the driver where I'm actually going oh, gotcha. and trying to hit it hard. Yeah, and you're trying to, you're moving everything together. The biggest thing that most recreational golfers do is they, when they're going to hit pitches, is they get to the ball and they stop and they stop their whole body. They stop everything. They need to turn everything around like this at the same speed. All right, final, the final thing, let's show them this John Rom drill if you grab your noodle. So this is something I saw on the, uh, with Roger Steele on the Callaway channel. My swing coach in Spain, Eduardo, Eduardo Tellez, said, listen, you can't play hitting it this way. I grew up in tree line courses, uh -huh. up in the forest basically, so it was not working very well. So I was like, you know what? Learn how to hit it straight. And he basically forced me to never get past my shoulder height. My, the goal was to have the club aiming at the sky and then swing from there. There was also a drill we used to make. He, he loved having me like, feel like I was taking the club here. Right. Right. And then swing as hard as I could. So it would be something like this. And he like was quarter swing. Without really me understanding, he was making me move my, my lower body right. and creating that motion. John Rahm talked about how he would have his coach would put it right armpit high and he'd still have to hit it really far. So talk to Lee about if I had a long drive contest and I was like, or if I was in the trees and I had to make this go as far as possible, then why is this so interesting and so good to, to practice like this when you're trying to get more? I think to me it's because you've got to use impact. the ground. You've got to get your body working through the ball. And the thing about it is you're not, you're not, the trigger to make the downswing, to make that speed, is not happening in transition, it's happening before transition. You've got to send that signal to your body to go 
sooner than what most people think. Yeah, if you want to have power and still sh stop your swing at about here, then right about here, you got to start yeah. well, everything and, and going And who that said that? With Drew. Drew, Whenever yeah. Drew's been here, that's what Drew's whole deal was. He felt, Drew felt mm. that his backswing ended at his right thigh. Yeah, so my max force is about backwards about there. So it snaps back like a rope band for free. The harder I want to hit a golf ball, the more effort I put into my backswing. Not so much the downswing. Oh, okay. okay. Why does a faster backswing translate to a faster downswing? What's the there's, there's, there's a few reasons. So one, the faster I swing it back, the more braking force I apply to the handle to stop the club. And if you look at like a force time chart, the more force I apply to brake, the more force I start with. So as I start my downswing, it's a higher starting force point and there's more average force across across the hand pad. The other one is the faster I swing back, the more tension I place on muscles across like the lats, the obliques. It recruits more muscles. And it stretches things to a greater degree. As long as I don't just kind of like flail open. So if I swing back and I'm in posture, there's a significantly larger stretch at velocity. Yeah. So it snaps back like a rubber band for free. So Drew, when you have this initial like heave so to speak off the ball what point is it like okay this is my maximum force back and then yeah. i have to start slowing it yeah so my max force is about backwards it's about there <laughs> so I'm, I'm so that's this so that's why you've said to me before that feels almost sometimes like the top of your backswing yeah 100 percent. so like my i'm 100 I'm percent or like uh, if you look at me on swing cattle so i'm about 95 percent pressure on my right foot by the time the club is about here uh -huh. So once that happens, the rest of the swing is me trying to stop it from going any further. That's the main difference between an amateur and a pro. What the amateur wants to do is post up on his right say and load into the right side here. Yeah. What you're doing is what the pros are doing. Your fastest moment is almost just before the end of the takeaway. And now you're now you're breaking it, but you're also putting yourself in position to come in like Dr. Juan talked about where we're going with that rhythm drill that you're doing before. Yeah, so what I feel as a braking force essentially is the same thing that puts me back on my left Never side. Never thought about it as a braking force, but that's a good, that's a good way to, to look at it. The first school with Dr. Kwan that we did it at the Grand, that's what right. he felt. He felt like, like, his right, like his backswing ended right about now <sighs> and everything is getting... If you want to hit it somewhere too, you got to let it out from here too. Well, it's, yeah, and that, yeah, like you can't that would be, drag it that yeah, way. That would be what we see time. with the people that have, have hack motion are saying, and that's what you got from uh, John Sinclair. Yeah. You got the same thing that with him, you're gonna go from, the left wrist is gonna go from, uh, he called it flexion to extension as you're going through impact. Yeah, so John will say that right here is about maximum right wrist extension and yeah. maximum left wrist flexion. Yeah. And the other guy that and then you've from had there your... through the ball is it's out. Right. So the, the old flying wedge is not, it might be a good drill, it might be a good thing to have somebody feel, but it's not something that can happen. And, you know, when you get the pictures, I always get them sent to me all the time, these still pictures that say, John, see, you're wrong, and it's after impact. Maybe it, they show me Bryson or whoever, and their hands are like this after impact. But they also, in the same frame of the picture, there's this giant divot, you know, oh, it's yeah. flying through the air and where they'd stuck their hand in the ground, which caused that picture, right? Versus yeah. what and they in those, actually do. John, in those, so still, in those still images of, let's say, like John Rahm, like, you know, he's, he's there. If you shuttled backwards a couple frames, you would see him in even more. In even more you would see his like, left wrist extending coming into the ball. Yeah. For sure. I always believe that everybody right before impact that arm that lead wrist is moving towards flexion and then if you hit the ground and the club goes back yeah you know that's that's the same same as when everybody says well you have all this pressure on, on, with your trail hand on the club yeah you know the alpha torque the old debate of the alpha torque pushing through where every shred of evidence shows the hand is catches up at impact because it stops you know it's it's yeah, you know, colliding every with something. Every shred of proof says that trail hand is well, not it's, keeping it's up. Out. The other person you've had on your channel that did do this is Monty. Yeah. Monty talked about the same thing. This is, 
this is not bad. It's just bad if it happens before you hit the ball. Right. You want to get this to happen over here. Right. It was interesting right. that last shot I hit, you know, I, I could only take it to, to about feeling about here, but in actuality about here. It went like 135, like a couple <laughs> yards further than a normal one for me. So it just shows you how much you got to use your body and how much it can help you. Yeah, that's really good. And the thing, and the thing about the ball flight that the people aren't seeing is your ball flight is is a playable draw. It's starting just a smidge to the right of where you want to end yeah. up with and coming back to the target. That's what I've noticed with these drills, Lee. If I do it uh, without the noodle, just just the normal. This one to this one. I've noticed as well that helps me is if I put like a yeah. stick here and I get all the balls starting some degree of right. Well, I would, I would, like if the I ball starts it, left, I think I'd, 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 I wouldn't put it over here. I put it in this area. Okay, yeah. You don't want to get too much this way because I don't want to start at the target and then go left. I want to start a little bit right. Okay. So if I'm doing the normal one, you can, you can go this way. And, uh, and I have like a, a, a stick there. Then I'm just gonna wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Like, did you wait. see that video I did with Malaska where, where he he's talked about like the building blocks of becoming good, and he wanted people hitting blocks on purpose at first, and then starting to make a draw. Almost everybody on tour, everybody hits the ball slightly from inside the target line. Okay. All of those guys, the ball is not starting right on their target line. It's starting a few degrees right of their target line. Even the guys who fade it hit the inside of the ball. It starts on or just right, and then it fades. So, so you, you've got to learn relative to your target line to have the club coming into the ball straight down or slightly from the inside. Now, the tour players live anywhere from... 0.3 degrees to 0.5 degrees from the inside. Okay. Or five, you know, so five degrees from the inside to like point something. Yeah, right. But they're all hitting from the inside a little bit. Yeah. Now, once I can curve it to the left, now I've got to get a path, which is the path that the club and my arm swing on, to make the ball start to the right enough so that that face alignment curves it back. Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. So this is a really great setup. Get get your yardsticks here on the toes, on the heels. You got the stick there. And I'm just trying to start the ball somewhat to the right of that stick. And I can go even more. Better? Yeah, that's really good. I mean, that's a little, that's like basically 10% off of a full swing. So if I really do the drill correctly. Like that. Yeah. That's really good. All right, cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to be doing another golf school at the Grand with Dr. Scott Lynn coming up at the end of August 2023. We really had amazing before and afters there. When you're using the swing catalyst plate, you uh, start to feel things that just are completely not, uh, not intuitive but really helped people a lot. And we had great results from that. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. If you're interested in talking to Lee directly, his email is in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.